Rarely do Idaho's politicians across the board agree on much of anything. But one topic has gelled elected leaders like none other, the Lava Ridge Wind Project. The proposal calls for nearly 150,000 acre wind farm just outside the Minidoka incarceration camp. And when weighing the value of history against the nation's need for energy, well, Idahoans are siding with the land. And Japanese Americans, they're not the only ones opposed to this massive wind farm, saying it will ruin the legacy of that historic site. Indigenous leaders are also at odds with our growing consumption of energy. They have been the stewards of the land going back millennia. And going forward, they want their voices heard too. Which is why tomorrow, Idaho Energy Freedom is hosting a pair of clean energy consultants to share their native tribal perspective. Andrew Bartline got a glimpse into what that might look like. It takes a lot of energy to talk clean and green. Wind to solar, to geothermal, to electrical, to the water systems. And that's just scratching the surface, well known to Chantel Green. Yeah. Where the industry's in her name. Green with the E on the end, like my last name. It's in her blood. Hehus, which is Green and Nest Purse. So Hehus Green Energy LLC. How did you find yourself getting into this kind of work? First, it's from an upbringing. I grew up in Lapway, Idaho, um, and I come from a fishing family. Um, so, uh, you know, advocating for. Um, our natural resources, our waterways, um, our animals, our plants, um, and being able to make those sustainable and learning how to live within um, is something that I've been entrenched with since I was little. Chantel made a career out of advocating for her people. She served as the vice chairwoman of the Nez Perce Tribal Council and had a seat on Governor Little's 2022 Energy Infrastructure Task Force. I'm always a voice for my, my people, no matter where I go. Tomorrow, she's sharing that voice with Idaho Energy Freedom and her unique perspective as an indigenous person too. And I advocate for dam removal. Um, that can come with a lot of opposition because that, that means that we actually have to change what our energy consumption actually is as of right now. And also where the power is actually coming from. Change, a word and experience Chantel knows just as well. And that's really what indigenous people have been throughout the years is changing and uh, being flexible. And that's why we exist today. You know, you either change or you get left behind. And I speak from the cultural aspect of that because our life way is that waterway. Do you often find it difficult to get your voice heard? on issues like this, topics like this, and, and also be a representative of your people back home? Yes and no. Um, if I'm told no in the front door, I'm gonna go around the back anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna figure out a way. I'm a very, very solution-oriented individual, so. Primarily solutions for not just clean energy. That's a number one. But green energy. We're looking to reverse as much as we possibly can. Again, it's always, you know, in the name of our natural resource improvements. The event tomorrow will also host Talia Martin. She has 12 years of experience in tribal and federal government waste management, along with in renewable energy as well. She's a member of the Shoshone Bannock tribes of Fort Hall and served as a tribal liaison with the U.S. Department of Energy. So tomorrow, Brian, it's really meant to be an informational, informational mm -hmm. session, excuse me, educational as well. And of course, we're not going to solve the problem with no. the dams that goes back decades. But at the very least, they want to explain their perspective and of course what they're trying to protect and bring back uh, from a cultural standpoint because a lot of their values all tie back to that. Well, I mean, they have been a part of this discussion for a long time, but it does seem like they've become more vocal yes. of late when it comes to the dams. Everyone is in agreement on the wind farm. We get that. But the dams, I don't think you can find three people that agree on this. And the thing. tough part is, too, is she's practical about it, where yeah. you get rid of these dams, that energy needs to come from somewhere. Right. And she's saying, well, I'm going to work to help try to find those solutions because, again, you can't just lose that energy and not fill the gap. All right. Anyone interested, tune into that. It should be interesting. A good discussion. Thanks, Andrew.